Welcome to Electron Line. Our next topic here. Whoop, no, I don't want to say it that way. Sorry. Welcome the to length Electron. of the rod divided by the what we call the oh man uh, modulus of rigidity. All right, start over. Okay. Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's talk about the torsional constant. In the previous video, we talked about the twist angle being the product of the torque times the length of the rod divided by the rigidity modulus and what we call the torsional constant J. But what is that? What really is the torsional constant J? It does definitely depend upon the shape of the object. Well, back in 1820, the French engineer Dulot derived analytically the torsional constant, which we use the letter J for, of a rod. It turns out that's the only shape, a, a cylindrical rod, for which we can actually derive that analytically. All other shapes are approximated. We could still use the same mathematical technique to derive it, and we'll show you later how, but the result that we get isn't actually what we measure when we try to measure the, the twist angle relative to the torque and so forth. And that is because if the cross-sectional area isn't perfectly circular, it turns out that the way the material is constructed with corners and things like that, if the rod is like a square rod or a rectangular rod instead, that the analytical results aren't exactly the same as the results we get when we test it. But the important thing is that there is a very strong analogy between the two, and yet the torsional constant does really depend on the shape. Here's two examples. Let's say we have a beam that we put on its side versus a beam that we lay flat. And let's say that it's supported at the two ends here and at the two ends there. Now we apply a load to those two. Notice that this one will barely bend, if at all, or probably not noticeably so. And here, of course, a board laid like this with a heavy load on it will definitely bend quite a bit. Notice that we can define the torsional constant, which, by the way, is also called the second moment of area. And we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. But the torsional constant, or the second moment of area, can be defined as a measure of how well the cross-sectional shape can resist bending under load. So you can look at this right here, you can say, well, this must have a high second moment of area. Or you can say, this must have a high torsional constant. This must have a smaller second moment of area or a smaller torsional constant because you can see that the board bends a lot. If it resists bending and has a high second moment of area or a high torsional constant, if it bends a lot, it has a low moment, uh, second moment of area or torsional constant. In this particular case, if it's shaped like a rectangle like that, if the cross-sectional area is a rectangle, where we call this the height and this the width, B, then we can say that I, which is a measure of the second moment of area for that cross-sectional area, is B H cubed divided by 12. Now notice since H is a much greater size than B, the width here, and since H is cubed, you can see that I must be much larger. If we lay the board flat, now H is a small quantity, B is a large quantity, and you can see that if we come up with the same calculation, since H is very small and cubed, you can see that I would be a lot smaller. There's a huge difference in the ability to resist bending when the board is laid like this or when it's sitting like that. Another way in which we can think about it is that the, the uh, torsional constant is equal to the double integral of X squared dA. In other words, dA would be a small area element on the cross-sectional area of the board x would be the distance from the point about which it can bend. So usually this goes right through the center of the cross-sectional area. You can see that no, no portion of the board is very far away from that central line right here. Therefore, x will always be very small. Of course, x squared is very, very small. You can see that this will give you a small quantity. If we have it situated like this, notice that some of the area is far away from the point or from the line that goes through the center of the cross-sectional area, and therefore you can get a large value here. Now, again, when you calculate I, now the reason why we have I and J is that I is the second moment of area about a single axis, J is the distance across 
from a single point on that axis and we'll show you the difference later. In this case it will be very similar. But you can see now that when it resists bending it's because we have a lot of area in the cross section where it's far away from the axis that goes right to the center. If it's a small value then we can see that most of the area in the cross section is very close to the line that goes right to the center. Hopefully, this gives you now a much better concept of what we mean by the torsional constant. Remember, it's simply a measure of how well the cross-sectional shape can resist the bending under load. And that's how we know.